number one. Most people believe that the electric battery is a relatively new invention. However, a 2,200-year-old clay jar found near Baghdad, Iraq has been described as the oldest known electric battery in existence. The clay jar and others like it are part of the holdings of the National Museum of Iraq and have been attributed to the Parthian Empire. Fill the jar with an acidic liquid, such as vinegar or fermented grape juice, and you have a battery capable of generating a small current. The acidic liquid permits a flow of electrons from the copper tube to the iron rod when the two metal terminals are connected. 1800 years later, the battery was invented again by the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta. American scientist and inventor Benjamin Franklin first used the term battery. Number two. The history of the light bulb shows the process, often complicated, of the invention and how, in most cases, the credit is not granted to those who deserve it. While Thomas Edison was a brilliant inventor, he did not invent the light bulb. Conversely, along with other inventors that you have probably never heard of, Heinrich Goebel probably invented the light bulb after trying to sell the device to Edison in 1854. Edison did not see anything useful at the time, but shortly after Goebel's death, he bought the patent for his widow at an extremely low price and claimed to have invented the product. Number three. Alexander Graham Bell is often credited with being the inventor of the telephone since he was awarded the first successful patent. However, there were many other inventors, such as Alicia Gray and Antonio Meucci, who also developed a talking telegraph. Attributing the true inventor or inventors to a specific invention can be tricky business. Often, credit goes to the inventor of the most practical or best working invention rather than to the original inventor or inventors. This happens to be the case with the invention of the telephone. There is a lot of controversy and intrigue surrounding the invention of the telephone. There have been court cases, books, and articles generated about the subject. Of course, Alexander Graham Bell is the father of the telephone. After all, it was his design that was first patented. However, he was not the first inventor to come up with the idea of a telephone. Antonio Meucci, an Italian immigrant, began developing the design of a talking telegraph or telephone in 1849. In 1871, he filed a caveat an announcement of an invention, for his design of a talking telegraph. Due to hardships, Meucci could not renew his caveat. His role in the invention of the telephone was overlooked until the United States House of Representatives passed a resolution on June 11, 2002, honoring Meucci's contributions and work. In the late 1800s, a race to create the first successful phone was underway, and the two main contenders in this race were Alicia Gray and Alexander Graham Bell. If you have never heard of Gray, it is probably because you were taught in school that Bell was the genius who invented the device that could transmit intelligible sounds from one place to another. As it happens, on February 14, 1876, both men filed their patents, though it was actually discovered that Bell had bribed the patent office to discover what Gray's invention really looked like. Because of this deception, it is often claimed that Alicia Gray is the main inventor of the telephone, although he never obtained the credit he deserves. Number 4 Broadcasting mogul David Sarnoff, the head of RCA in 1928, asked inventor Edwin Armstrong to find a way to eliminate the noise in AM radio. Armstrong started working a way to modulate frequency rather than amplitude on a carrier wave. Armstrong filed for patents on his frequency modulation FM system in 1933. RCA had the right of first refusal on his patents by this time, but they were unimpressed with the system because it was complex and was not compatible with existing equipment. 
Armstrong set up his own broadcasting company to broadcast using the FM system. Armstrong went to smaller radio companies like Zenith and General Electric. He also got the FCC to allocate a band for this new kind of radio with 40 channels in the 42 to 50 megahertz range. Many FM radio stations sprang up in the 1940s and 1950s using the Armstrong system. Sarnoff could not accept FM radio stations competing with his existing AM radio station empire. So Sarnoff lobbied the U.S. Congress to move the existing FM band to a higher frequency. Consequently, the FCC moved the AM band, putting Armstrong's FM network out of business. This started a legal battle between Armstrong and Sarnoff that lasted for years. The emotional strain of this caused Armstrong to commit suicide in 1954. Number 5 Most people believe that Mark Zuckerberg is the inventor of the social networking website. Mark launched Facebook as a sophomore at Harvard in 2004. He did so without the consent of three of his classmates who helped him think of the idea, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss and Divya Narenda. In 2007, the three students received a payment from Facebook to help alleviate tensions among the former classmates. Facebook was not the first social networking website. Actually, the first were Friendster, LinkedIn, High Five, Zing, and MySpace. Number 6 Many believe that Marconi invented the radio. However, in the last decade of the 19th century, Nikola Tesla discovered that he could use his electronically charged Tesla coils to transmit messages over long distances, and he had an accepted patent for this in 1900. During this time, a young inventor named Marconi also tried inventing something similar using many of Tesla's patents, and when he finally succeeded in creating a radio broadcast, he was given credit for creating the radio. Tesla was rightly furious with this false development. Unfortunately, he never had the money to prosecute Marconi, although the invention was credited to him after his death in 1943. Tesla's invention was also founded on the work of Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose, James Clerk Maxwell, and Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. Number 7 The majority of people believe that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak invented the mouse icon graphical user interface known as a GUI, which is a form of user interface that allows users to interact with electronic devices through graphical icons. This was basically the beginning of the modern personal computer. However, the mouse was first patented by engineer Douglas Engelbart in 1967 and was described as an XY position indicator for a display system. It was then further developed at Xerox. When Steve Jobs visited Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center in the late 1970s, he was amazed by what he saw, a demonstration of a new computer mouse. So Jobs effectively invented the first modern computer mouse and first modern personal computer in the mid-1970s by stealing it from Xerox. Now, stealing is an overstatement. Xerox was compensated with a pre-IPO Apple stock deal. This was a fraction of the actual value for getting the mouse icon, GUI, and network technology. The bean counter management at Xerox did not see the value of things that were not directly copier related. Apple released the Macintosh on January 24th, 1984. It was the first personal computer in the world to use a mouse icon graphical user interface. A year later, Bill Gates stole the mouse for the Windows operating system. Number 8 Many people believe that the reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape recorder was invented in the United States. Actually, the earliest known audio tape recorder was a non-magnetic, non-electronic version invented by Alexander Graham Bell and patented in 1886. 
Magnetic tape recording as we know it today was developed in Germany during the 1920s by Fritz Flumer. The first practical tape recorder was the Magnetophone K1, demonstrated in Germany in 1935. American audio engineer Jack Mullen acquired two magnetophone recorders and 50 reels of magnetic tape from a German radio station near Frankfurt in 1945. These two magnetophone recorders were given to Ampex, which is an American electronics company founded in 1944 by Alexander M. Poniatoff. Ampex's first great success was a line of reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape recorders developed from the magnetophone. German patents were voided because of World War II. Therefore, Ampex received the patent for the magnetic tape recorder. Number 9 In September of 1927, Philo Farnsworth built the first image dissector camera tube and successfully used this device to transmit the world's first electronic television signal. It was a single thin line scratched into a smoke glass slide. From that point, progress was rapid. A demonstration for the press was held in 1928, and in 1929, the first image of a human face was transmitted. The face was that of Farnsworth's wife. Broadcasting mogul David Sarnoff, head of RCA in 1930, was determined to be the patent holder for all electronic television. Sarnoff saw that television was going to be big and could not afford to have RCA miss out. Sarnoff hired Vladimir Zworkin, a Russian scientist, to figure out how the image dissector worked. Zworkin had been working on what was called the iconoscope for over a decade. It was a device like Farnsworth's image dissector, except Zworkin could never get the iconoscope to work. When Zworkin saw the image dissector, he then knew how to get the iconoscope to work. RCA sued Farnsworth, claiming that Zworkin's 1923 patent had priority, even though he had never made a working version of his iconoscope. RCA won the first round, as well as a subsequent appeal. Farnsworth never received any royalties from RCA. Number 10 Everyone believes that the transistor was invented at Bell Labs by John Bardeen, Walter Bretain, and William Shockley. However, the first patent for the transistor principle was filed in Canada by physicist Julius Edgar Lilienfeld on October 22, 1925. But Lilienfeld published no research articles about his devices, and his work was largely ignored by the industry. In 1934, German physicist Dr. Oskar Heil patented another field effect transistor. There is no direct evidence that these devices were built. The 1947 inventors of the transistor were John Bardeen, Walter Bretain, and William Shockley. Bardeen, with a PhD in mathematics and physics from Princeton University, was a specialist in the electron conducting properties of semiconductors. Bretain, also a PhD, was an expert in the nature of the atomic structure of solids at their surface level and solid-state physics. Shockley, a PhD, was the director of transistor research for Bell Labs. The Bell Labs patent showed that William Shockley and a co-worker at Bell Labs, Gerald Pearson, had built operational versions from Lilienfeld's patents, yet they never referenced this work in any of their later research papers or historical articles. <laughs> 